Hey buddy, Glitch Reaper here. I'm back for some more Magic Duels, and we are still continuing in on Battle for Zendikar. So, let's head in and see what this next one here is about. If you hope to reclaim Seagate, you will need the help of all those willing and able to fight. But when you approach a group of Zendikari, they are hostile. They band together against you, the Outsider. You're going to have to prove yourself. She's like, okay, okay, I'm here to help. Will you please? And they're like, no, no, we, we don't trust you. So, this is one of those kinds where it's, uh, just one of these times where it's a trial by combat. Let's see here. Glory Seeker is not the biggest one, but he could help a little. That Shadow Glider is going to be nice because it's always good to have an early flyer. And this one we've seen before with Retreat, re Darn Lips, retreat to Amiria, and it's going to come in handy. So, oh, target creature, tar two target creatures you control each get plus two plus two in game flying until it, okay, that could be useful. So a lot of this looks like it's going to be a decent hand, so let's try some things out. Yep, they're going with, uh, is that an Evolving Wilds? Yep, that is. <laughs> Uh, that's how you know. Uh, <laughs> Evolving Wilds has an ability where you tap and sacrifice it to uh, look for a uh, another land through your deck and pop it up. It has to be a basic land, though. Because, uh, yeah. But yeah, you have to sacrifice it and search your library for a basic land card and put it into battlefield tapped. And then shuffle your library. That That's how Evolving Wilds works. Now, this one has a different artwork than most of them I've seen in the game, but you can get some specifically based on sets. Serene Stewart, whenever you gain life, you may pay one white. If you do, put a plus one plus one counter on Serene, on target creature. Oh, yeah, this one's, this one's particularly potent for an early out, so that could uh, get a little uh, rough. But I do have some other combos coming up here, so that will probably help. Tandem Tactics. Two target creatures each get plus one plus two until end of turn and you gain two life. Okay, so that's good. That's also from this set, so you can actually get it in in game here. You can also get the Shadow Glider, Retreat to Maria. But this Windborn Charge is going to be exclusive to the stories, so yeah. Yeah, they don't want to risk that. Core Castigator can't be blocked by Eldrazi Scions. Uh, <laughs> I'm not playing Eldrazi, so that ability is completely irrelevant. And apparently I've got one too. Okay, so let's see here. Shadow Glider out would be nice. I can't pay for a Treat to Amiria right now, so I think I'm going to go with the Shadow Glider. Uh, see, I don't think they're going to try blocking with this one. I think they'll try blocking with this one. But, if I do attack this way, I can take that out and knock out its damage potential. So, I think I'm going to be aggressive this round. Oh, they didn't block with either. That was surprising. Well, I'm not going to block with my flyer next round, but I will be able to get some things to help me out. I don't have enough mana to cast that right now. So this will be a bit of a uneven trade. But not that big of one. This is kind of starting round. Cliffside Lookout. Oh, if yeah, this one, if you uh, pay a decent fee of mana, creatures control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. But it's not very big in and of itself. It takes a decent amount to pay that. I think it's, yes, yeah, like four and one white, so they don't have the ability to afford that right now. Uh, do I want to do with Treat Tumeria? So this one I can't pay for yet. I 
got another Shadow Glider. That's good. Core Castigator will even things out between me and them. Okay, so I'm going to attack with both, and I do have enough to cast Tandem, I'm drawing lips, Tandem Tactics. Aha! Uh -huh. I saw that. And that's the one I want to get rid of. So... Confirm. <laughs> okay, that's gonna get rid of that problem. Bonk. Goodbye. Thank you. Okay, that that uh, that even that out. Core entanglers. Whenever core entanglers or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, tap target creature and opponent controls. And yeah, it's something you can get here because that's from Battle for Zendikar. I, I recognize the symbol pretty well. Okay, they're gonna attack for four points pretty quickly. Okay, so they stung me a few, but I do have enough to do this. Stasis Snare. I could cast that. It uh, lets you exile a creature until this leaves the battlefield. It's actually a common thing with, with white enchantments to do that. But I think I'd like to get my landfall ready. Or then again, that thing's decently tough, so I might need to might need to power it up a bit. Hmm, or take it down. I'm gonna take this thing down. So stasis snare that. It also keeps them from having further effects like that. So yeah. Uh, see, these two can cancel each out later. So I'm actually going to attack with these two for a bit more of the overall here, because I can use this to block one of those two later. So I'm a little willing to make that trade. This is definitely mostly a slugfest, but you never know. I mean, I pop out an enchantment. And they could too. I mean, they got a, a one point of green, so you kind of got to watch out for that, and up oh, here we go. Uh, Tajuru Beastmaster, Elf Warrior Ally. Whenever Tajuru Beastmaster on lips, whenever Tajuru Beastmaster or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Okay. That's going to be a bit rougher, but I might get another stasis snare later. And as I said, I was going to be able to take that one out. So that four damage does not get passed. They're just going to be dealing two this time. But yeah, the core are definitely attacking. They're, uh, humanoids that are very pale. Okay, let's see here. What do I have access to? I could do this and get some heavy attack power going for a moment. I might kind of need to, to get through this. Because if I use this, they get a decent amount, although I might save that until a little bit later. I could try having, okay, I, I think I could attack with this and have one of my glory seekers block that. Because it's decently bulky. This is like a 5-5, five five, so I'm going to have to do at least a little bit of defense here. I'm going to pick because they don't exactly have anything to reach, or another flyer. So I'm going to try to pull ahead. These Zendikari, they, uh, 
They're, they're putting up some decent resistance to somebody who's trying to help them out. That can happen. That, that, that can happen. Another core castigator on their end. It has some pretty decent attack power for its uh, ability there. Stonework Puma. It's a cat ally. Uh oh, they're gonna build a lot of power into this time. Ouch, that thing's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Not gonna be able to block it all, but I can certainly take that out, because I'd like to be able to do a quick surge later. Finish things off quicker. But right now it's getting a bit narrow. We'll see if I can pull this off. Depends a bit on this draw. Undo Great Horn. First strike and landfall. Uh, that could work for a boost. But maybe. Well, it doesn't have flying, and I'd like to grant it flying with this a little bit later. And its first strike should worry them a bit. So I'm going to put this one out. And again, try to go for the uh, dive bomb routine. Have another shadow glider. That can come in handy. Right now, I'm just trying to play keep away with that big creature. It's it's bulky. Kindy patrol. Whenever a kindy patrol or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, creatures you control gain vigilance until end of turn. Okay, this could be an issue. Okay, I can take that out, because first strike. I'm gonna lose that, but they'll deal me like five points of damage. And that creature is safe, because first strike damage goes first. That one on the other hand is a goner. So goodbye, Glory Seeker. You, you, you did a good job, but uh, in the end, this is not your day. Oh. Uh, I might be able to boost this up a little bit more than I thought. Because Andu Great Horn. Uh, gets plus two plus two until end of turn if I get a land out. So it'll be a four five, and I can boost it further to be a six seven, and that'll get a boost. So I think I can finish this now. I just need to pop that out, then it powers up. Okay, can I do both of these? No, I definitely need to just use the Windborn Charge. Because two target creatures you control each get plus two plus two until end of... and flying until end of turn. So, if I play this, then... I mean, you won't give something with flying extra flying, but you can, however, use this as a big finishing blow. So, I'm going to do the usual story mode thing and attack with all. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, is that usually this? That's why is that so usually the solution when it comes to story mode? But man, that beast really is a beast. Just funk. If it had been any more, the first strike would have taken care of it. But now the Zendikari have learned hey, I'm a strong guy, but I'm on your side. Can we just get to working together to get rid of these Eldrazi, please? I don't want to have to beat you anymore. Because <laughs> Gideon's just trying to be noble here. By fighting with honor, you earn the trust of the Zendikari. In particular, Kiora, powerful merfolk planeswalker. With her help, you assemble an army and lead them towards Seagate. After a rendezvous with Nyssa, you are ready for battle. So we're going to have basically a, uh, a round two at Seagate, because the Eldrazi have clearly overrun it already, but we're trying to take it back. So that's what this is about. 
and you can tell that they're preparing to charge into this and the Hildrazi are upon them. So next time with uh, Magic Duel Story Mode, it'll be the second Battle of Seagate. So for now, uh, this has been uh, Glitch Reaper. I'll, I'll be uh, logging off. Hope to hear from you all later. Uh, <laughs> bye for now, and remember, Friday Night Magic.